Hi there, homespun friends. It is Sherry, and it is wonderful to see you today. It has been so long, and I have truly missed you. Do you know that in the last few days, I have received three different messages from people from my YouTube subscriber group that say, we miss you, and we miss your videos, and we hope you're doing well. And I just want you to know how much I appreciate you reaching out to me. That is what prompted this video today. I have a few moments just to share with you, and I wanted to bring you up to date with some of the things that's going on in my life right now. Over the past few months, my husband and I have been given a brand new opportunity, and I thought I would tell you a little bit about it. Um, my dad has had a ministry for a lot of years that he has done online where he offers sermons from people, ministers all around the world on a website. And so this allows pastors to go online to access sermon materials, to get ideas and, and uh, like illustrations and other things that they can use to write their sermons. And not only does he have sermons, but he had like commentaries and other things that were like Bible study helps for them. I don't know how many people realize it, but pastors are writing a lot every week. They're writing sermons. They're doing Bible studies. Many of them are doing teaching guides and other things. And it's not too hard to run out of ideas or just to find that the well is dry. You know, for me, I know what it's like when the well is dry. I think that's one of the reasons that I've slowed down on a lot of my filming on YouTube. I wasn't really sure that I had anything important to say anymore. And I didn't know what God wanted me to say on my channel. And so I just took a pause. You know, when we aren't sure what direction that we should move next, being still is the best option. You know, just being still where we are and praying until God tells us exactly what to do. And when he opens the door and he leads us to walk through it, then our path is right there before us. And that is sort of what has happened through this opportunity from my dad. Now, when my father created this site, it was over 20 years ago, and it has been a great help to a lot of ministers. But over the last year or two, as he's faced some health, uh, a few health problems, and he's also approaching now his 80th birthday this year, um, dad has just felt like maybe it was time for him to sort of retire from that ministry. And he had mentioned on the site that he was going to close the site down. And he had so many pastors reach out to him and beg him not to do that because they use this site, um, you know, to help them every week and so many times um, over the months that they'll be looking for something or just looking for inspiration, praying that God will, you know, show them something to speak about and they'll find something on this site that my dad has created. So um, he was praying about what to do and that's when he approached me and my husband and he said, hey guys, would you consider taking over this ministry? And as my husband and I prayed about it, we just felt so much excitement come over us. We thought this is wonderful because we have a lot of ideas now that are just flowing in our minds of ways we could continue what my dad has so faithfully done, as well as expand it a bit so that we can offer even more encouragement to pastors and wives, because we have a great love for pastors and wives. My husband has been in the ministry, well, I've been in the ministry over 40 years with him. We've been married 40 years. And, and then I grew up as a pastor's daughter. Many of you know that. And so ministry has been a way of life for us. Now, I didn't start out wanting to be a minister's wife. Um, I went to college and was so excited to go. I was an English major there and looking forward to new things that God um, would open up for me. And I did not want to be in the ministry. I had lived as a pastor's child. I knew that that was often challenging. It was um, wonderful too, but it also had a lot of challenges to it. And I just wanted to be out from under that. Uh, I hate to say it was a weight, but it is a weight sometimes on you. And I just wanted to be free of that. But the more I tried to be free, you know, the more trapped I felt. And isn't that amazing how God works so often in our lives? I remember the first time that I met my husband. I was a freshman. I was 18 years old. He's two years older than I am. 
and he saw me sitting at a cafeteria table by myself having some dinner and he told his friends if I get through this cafeteria line and she's still by herself I'm gonna go over there and sit with her and that's what he did and I was so surprised when this handsome funny young man came over he, he it was so humorous right from the beginning had a great personality um, very vivacious person and he sat in front of me and he made me laugh that entire meal and um, I remember him telling me one of the first things he told me is, he said, do you know one of the goals that I have for my life? And I thought he was going to be, you know, telling me something really um, serious. And I said, what? And he said, I've always dreamed of wrestling a bear. And he began to tell me this story, how he couldn't wait one day to go into the mountains and get in one of those pens and wrestle a live bear. And just to hear him tell it had me cracked up. And so in the back of my mind, I thought, man, this guy is really interesting. So that night he invited me to go to a basketball game on campus. And uh, later he told me that one of the reasons he asked me to go to that game is because he knew we both could get in free. And he had not been paid yet for his work that he did on the weekends in the um, as a, a bag boy at a, a small grocery store. And so he was trying to get away with not spending a whole lot of money. And that makes me laugh now when I think about it. And so we went to the ball game together. And while we were there, we talked about our majors and what we were thinking of doing with our lives. And I had been struggling with my major. I just had really been struggling overall. I I sort of wanted to be a journalist. I was thinking about a couple different things. Uh, my real dream had been to be an attorney or even a paralegal. I, I thought, you know, maybe God is going to just open the door for me to go on and study law or something. I didn't know. Um, and, and But when my husband told me, or my future husband told me his um, calling, it knocked me over with a feather. He said, I'm a religion major and I'm called to be a pastor. And that is the exact opposite of what I wanted. I mean, this guy, had all the things that I was looking for, but why did he have to be a ministerial student? That wasn't what I wanted. And he said that he could feel, feel immediately, you know, the atmosphere cool in our conversation. And that was on me because I was like, I don't even want to be at this ball game now. You know, I just can't handle this. And so it was a number of weeks, a couple of months even, that we didn't even go out anymore because I would just try to avoid him. I was struggling. I was struggling with a lot of things in my life. I'd even call my parents and ask them to come onto the campus one weekend and talk to me about maybe changing schools because I just didn't feel like I was where I needed to be in my life. And I was wrestling. I didn't really understand what I was wrestling with at the time. But later I realized that I was wrestling with God, you know, I had already told God my plan. My plan was not, you know, not to marry a pastor. My plan was to stay out of the ministry, but he had other things in mind. It took him a little while to convince me that I needed to be open to his plan and not mine. And so a couple of months later, we we're on a smaller Christian college type campus now, it is now a, a university, and um, and it was my dad's alma mater as well. Um, but at the time, it was, you know, just kind of a, a smaller college. And he was coming out of a building. It was like maybe a Friday or something. And as he exited the building, you know, I was coming out of my dorm, and I saw him across the way, and he saw me, and so he called out to me. And he ran over, and he said, what are you doing? I said, well, you know, the cafeteria is going to close. It's Friday. It closes early, and I... I need to get up there to get me something to eat before it closes down. And he said, well, why don't you let me take you out and we'll get a sub or something. And I said, okay, that would be great. And so off we went and we had a wonderful time together. And I was much more relaxed at this point because God had been dealing with me. And within three days of that um, occasion, it might've been like on a Monday, um, we were in town and, um, a neighboring town, and my husband, we were going down the street, and he took me into a jewelry store, and he said, if you were to be engaged, what would be your dream engagement ring? And so he had the owner pull out all these rings, and I began looking, but the very first one that I touched was the one I loved best. It was a beautiful solitaire, and I said, I really do keep going back. He said, well, that one's not that big. It's just like, I don't even remember how big it was. It was a I have carried or something. Anyway, I said, no, I, I love this ring. It's, it's, it's $2,000. I mean, that's a, in the 80s. You know, this was back in the, the, the early 80s. I mean, that was a, a very expensive ring. 
And so he took it from me and he gave it to the owner. And he says, would you let me, um, would you let me lay this ring away? I only have $3 on me right now, but I will come back later in the week and I will give you some more money towards it. And every week I will give you money for this ring if you will let me lay it away. And believe it or not, <laughs> that, that $3 secured that $2,000 ring um, on a layaway plan. And I'll never forget that jeweler. He was such a nice man. He's passed away now. Um, but uh, he's, he was smiled and he said, absolutely, I'll do it. And he wrote up the ticket and took the ring in the back. And that engagement ring was eventually mine in the future. And so was the start there of our serious path in moving forward. Now that was just a few days after we had started dating again. And that Wednesday night, that was the first Wednesday night that we had started dating again. My husband had been invited to a small church in the foothills there um, to do a Wednesday night Bible study for a church that did not have a pastor. And it was not far from his home. He lived probably about 35 or 40 minutes from the college. And then another maybe 15 minutes from there was this church. And he invited me to go along. He said, look, I'm going to go along and do this Wednesday night Bible study for this church. Would you like to come along with me? And I said, sure, I'll go. Um, because I, I took any opportunity to be with him. And so off we went to the mountains. And when we got there, everyone was so friendly and kind. And when he finished, um, one of the deacons came up to him and said, would you be willing to preach for us on Sunday? We had someone lined up. It didn't work out. And um, and we would just love for you to speak to us on Sunday. Would you be willing to preach? And my husband said, sure, you know, I'd be glad to. So he turned to me and he said, do you want to come with me on Sunday? And I was like, sure, I'll come with you on Sunday. And so it was that in just a few short weeks, this church had called my husband to be their pastor. He was 20 and I was 18. And so we, uh, we started driving up every week and ministering to this church. And um, it wasn't long until the adult couple's Sunday school class, the representative from that class came to me and said, you know, our teacher has been filling in for like a year and really never intended to be the long-term teacher for our class. Would you be willing to be the teacher for our class? And I said, well, I don't, I don't know about teaching couples. I mean, I'm, I'm just a, a young girl in, in college. I mean, I'm freshman, sophomore. I, you know, I'm not really, you know, I don't really have a lot of life experience. Uh, and they just insisted, please, would you consider teaching us? And, and so I said, well, I'll pray about it. And then the next week I told him, okay, okay, I'll do it. And so I became the Sunday school teacher for that class. And this sweet church just loved us and um, supported us, was so kind to us in our dating years. And it wasn't long then um, my husband graduated from college and I was a rising junior, but had decided to leave college life behind and get married because my husband was moving on to seminary. And eventually, um, you know, he received his master's and then later on down the line, his doctorate. And um, I was, you know, maybe just a, a year or two after, uh, let's see, two years, I guess, after we were married, um, I had our first child. I was working at the time in the seminary where he was attending there in Wake Forest. And uh, I was working in the registrar's office when our first child was born. And so then it started, you know, once he graduated with his master's degree, then I had our second child. And so it was, that I began to just be a full-time homemaker. And in that role, I felt I was fulfilling God's calling for me. And so over all these years, we've been married 40 years, um, this month, actually in May, um, we have been serving together in various churches in Virginia and North Carolina, primarily North Carolina, and what a blessing it has been. And as we have been in this, uh, this calling for so long, we have a great heart for other pastors and for pastors' wives because we have been doing this for a long time and we know the challenges. I think a lot of people look at pastors and they see them on Sunday mornings and they think that's pretty much all that they do but they don't know what goes on. We've had several secretaries over the years that come from a secular job into the church to work there full time. And they, it's not long, just a few months, and they come and they say, I had no idea. I had no idea that this is what it's like 
to be in ministry. I did not know. And so it is definitely a different kind of calling. You're dealing with all kinds of situations, all kinds of people, and you love them all. You want to see them follow Christ. You want to see them have happy lives in Him. You want to see God use people. But just like them, we're human too. We all have these different struggles that we're facing. And pastors have struggles too, and their wives do. And so our, as we were praying about this ministry and beginning to take over this nonprofit ministry my dad had, we began to feel that burden come on us that we wanted to encourage pastors and their wives, not just with maybe sermon materials, but with videos and other things that we could do to um, just maybe be a bright spot for them. And um, so we have a lot of wonderful ideas and we are in the process of having a brand new website built for this ministry. We're very, very close to the end and so excited. I think our website will be up within the next two to three weeks. I have been working tirelessly in fulfilling all of the requirements to, um, you know, have a, you know, a registered nonprofit business to, um, you know, become a tax exempt corporation to, it takes a lot of work. <laughs> um, to, to have bylaws and, and, and all kinds of uh, board of directors and um, to have a lawyer and an accountant and to just do things the right way. We just tried so hard to do everything the right way as we're moving along in a territory where we've never been before. But as you can probably tell from the sound of my voice, it's exciting and we can't wait to launch this new website. Now we're also going to be on other social media platforms. As I've indicated, we're going to have a YouTube channel um, the YouTube channel is set up. We just don't have any videos on there. I did that a couple days ago just to get the channel set up so that we can create videos and come to you. Now, even though this site is going to be for pastors and their wives primarily, it can also be used by anyone and it's totally free. We are going to um, survive on the contributions of the people. We've done that our whole ministry and, and God has blessed it. So um, we are just stepping out in faith on that part and we have already been blessed with contributions. And we are so, so grateful. We haven't really even asked. I mean, God's just providing already. And so I'm so thankful to see that. It's like a, you know, it's like when God gives you a confirmation that you're doing the thing you're supposed to do. And so we are going to have a, a YouTube channel where we can talk about various things. And even though you are a lay person, you may not be a pastor's wife or a pastor, you still can come and you can access materials. We know there's Sunday school teachers out there. There's Bible, uh, Bible study leaders. There's um, home church leaders. There's all types of youth pastor leaders that want to access Bible study materials um, for the work that they're doing for the Lord, and this will be available to everyone completely free. So you're gonna be able to go to our website, type in the book of the Bible, maybe the chapter you wanna look at, and you're gonna see all kinds of sermons and other commentaries and things pop up that will help you and maybe inspire you as uh, God is leading you to study in that area, and you can teach that to others. And then we are also going to have um, other things that we talk about, the more practical things of the ministry, like what are three things that I know now as a pastor's wife that I wished I had known from the very beginning? Um, I did sort of know some of these because I had a wonderful mom who was a pastor's wife, but so many pastor's wives, you know, they marry into the ministry or maybe their husband is called after they're already married and I don't have um, anyone really to talk to and it, it, they can feel kind of lonely. So that's one of the areas that I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to be talking to pastor's wives and there is going to be a page on our, uh, like a blog page inside of our website called um, Pastor Wife and you're going to be able to go there and you're going to see some um, different, hopefully inspirational materials that I share. I'm also going to share some practical things like um, recipes and budgeting and other ideas. And obviously my husband and I are not fully knowledgeable on everything. We're by no means like perfect experts on any of this. And that's why we're wanting to have a community together with others. Those out there who are pastors, those who are pastors' wives, and they're all kinds of churches and all kinds of pastors and wives. We want everyone to feel apart so that they can come in and share what they know. And we're, we're wanting to learn too. And that's what the goal is in life, is for God to use his people to um, encourage each other, to lift each other up, 
and to support each other so that we can learn and grow um, in Christ. That is so helpful. And that's the goal of this particular ministry that we're starting out with. So I wanted to tell you that's where I've been for the last several months. I'm still going to be on the Homespun Wife. I'm still going to be running my Facebook page. And I'm hoping that since I'm going to be in the camera a little bit more for our YouTube channel that we're going to have, I will be able to film more videos here for you at Homespun Wife and be able to um, just feel a renewed sense of energy that I can share some things with you that might encourage or help you. And, um, and as always, you're so sweet to leave, you know, comments. And I love seeing your names come up in the comments. So that is what I've been doing. And uh, I have missed all of you very much. And I am hopeful that maybe I'll be able to see a little bit more of you in the days ahead. I hope you will come along when we get our new website up and running, that you will visit the website and that you will come over to our YouTube channel and subscribe. As I said, we do not currently have any um, videos up because we are, my husband is off all next week and we are hoping to film a couple videos to start us out next week. Um, so be looking for that. I will tell you the name. The name of the YouTube channel is called Pastor Life. That's one word. P-A-S-T-O-R-L-I-F-E. Pastor Life. And when you go over there in the little icon, you will see a picture of me and my husband and you will know that is the channel. And you can go ahead and subscribe to it if you will and, um, and join us uh, before we even launch and videos on there and be a part of it so that when um, we do have videos, hopefully in the next week or so, you will be in on the very first of it. And um, some of the videos my husband and I will be doing together, um, some he'll probably be doing and some I might be doing as well. Um, we're just going to see. We're not sure exactly what God's going to do completely because we're walking out on faith. You know, we're stepping out day to day and saying, Lord, you know, what do you want us to do today? Just tell us what to do today. And he's showing us so please pray for us. Please pray for this ministry. Um, when the website is up and running, I will be sure to let you know. And in the meantime, um, I will give you our email address. It is called contact at pastorlife.com. Contact at pastorlife.com. And if you just want to send us a word of encouragement or a prayer, just send us an email. We would love to hear from you. It would be wonderful to have to know that our friends are praying because we have so many locally that are praying for us and we can feel those prayers. We can feel that um, God is with us and we're so excited and we want you to come and be a part of this ministry with us too. Friends, I love you so much. I thank you for all the years you have helped me and supported me. Um, you have stuck with me through thick and thin, and I am blessed by you, and I want you to know I love you. I look forward to seeing you next time, everyone. Bye-bye.